na 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 <clears throat> Hex, Darren, there's only one thing I like more than being Batman in a game, and that's being Batman again in a game. Lego Batman 2 DC Super Heroes is my favourite Lego game yet, because not only do I get to be Batman again in a game, but you also get to play with some of his friends. Yes, Bats is back, and this time the Joker teams up with Superman's rival Lex Luthor, and they work together to try and defeat Batman and Superman and get Lex elected as president. I hope you voted before you got here, because you might not be leaving. Uh, uh, you diseased maniac! No one is going to elect you president! This is the first LEGO game with actual voices instead of LEGO grunts. And what do you think, guys? Do you think it worked? I think it worked. It felt like a natural step for the series, and it means I can tell a better story, too. Look at that face! It's like, what's he gonna say? What's going to come out of that mouth of his? Affirmative. LEGO Batman 1 was a decent installment, but it was different from other LEGO games in that it wasn't based on a film, so gamers found it harder to connect with the story. The addition of voices fixes that problem. We have to stop them. You think? Yeah, and I think some of the actors here actually voiced some of the characters from the cartoons over the years. They all just sounded right, didn't they? Yeah. There are some standout moments in the campaign, such as exciting on-rail sections and fighting the massive Jokerbot through the sky and then on the robot and then back into the sky. Yeah, that was my favourite bit, I think. And there's a decent length to this game, too. It's classic LEGO gameplay. You have to make use of all the characters and their abilities to solve certain puzzles. Robin and Batman have a variety of suits to wear, such as Electricity Batman that lets him walk through electrical hazards. Robin has a hazmat suit to soak up hazardous goo. There's also Stealthy Sensor Batman. And many more. I found the puzzles to be very simple. I was hoping they'd get harder and be more about lateral thinking rather than just using the right suit to activate a trigger here and there. Yeah, they're not very challenging, are they? Uh, the game trains you to look for what you can interact with, and so that means you don't really know why you're activating a switch, you just do it because that's what you should be doing. I did enjoy the boss fights, though. Batman! Am I pleased to see you? <laughs> I think the developers were really looking to create a game that was going to be enjoyed by younger gamers and older gamers alike. And I think they've really achieved a decent level of challenge and lots of Lego fun here that will keep people interested. When you're playing on your own, though, your AI buddy is rubbish. Yeah. They can't fight very well at all and can be a tiny bit fiddly when activating switches or buttons here and there, so the challenge is in keeping enemies at bay while sorting out the puzzle. When you play with a real person, the challenge becomes about communication, telling each other what you need to do to get through a section. Yes, and it doesn't always go to plan, does it? Because friendly fire is always on. It should be called unfriendly fire, really. Yeah. After a while, you unlock Superman, and here is where the game changes quite a bit. Look, I'll hang around and give you a hand. Remember, I can do anything. Superman can fly, he's got cooling breath, he can laser things with his eyes. <laughs> and he's virtually indestructible when there's no kryptonite around. <laughs> when you're playing as Superman, you do have to let go of the fact that really he could solve all of the platforming problems in the game by just bashing through a wall and flying Batman and Robin to safety. Affirmative. You could tell it was quite a challenge for the developers to put Superman in the game because he's so overpowered. They've developed a system for what he can and can't do. Superman can't laser silver objects, for example, but he can destroy gold ones. Eventually, Superman gets kryptonite sickness, which weakens him down to Batman's level and makes him less fun to play with. Yeah, I mean, aside from the times when he's sick, I would argue that Superman is actually more fun to play than Batman. <gasps> Well, I mean, he can fly, and he can laser, and he's indestructible. I mean, it just makes me want a Lego Superman game, really. There's even a point where you can fly to Metropolis, and you can see the whole world built in it. Which makes me think that maybe they're already working on a game, or there's some DLC coming, who knows? Back it up a second, Hex. Did you just say, did you just say that Superman is better than Batman? Uh, be very careful how you respond, Tex. I sense an increase in Barjo's temperature, and this usually leads to a Barjo round. Uh, listen, I'm just saying that in this game specifically, it's more fun to play as Superman than as Batman in this game. 
specific reason. I hate to say it, I think you're right. It's just that Batman just can't do as much stuff without having to switch suits, and that mechanic gets a bit tedious. Plus, you can't quick fire batarangs or grapples, you can only do it by painting targets, except in very specific situations, and that takes time. You should be able to zip around this open world fluidly as Batman, and you can't. In story missions, you eventually get to play as Cyborg, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, and The Flash, but most of their abilities you've seen before in some form. Yes, it is fun being all these other characters, but it's a shame they didn't work more on their abilities. Green Lantern is the worst. All he can do is just fly. You do get to use his ring in very specific situations, but you don't actually get to do the cool stuff that his ring can do. Outrageous! Yeah, it certainly is outrageous, Darren. I just wish they'd spent more time fleshing out these characters and their unique abilities. Such as a Flash, he can go fast. Why not have some timed puzzles in there? Or Cyborg, he could hack computers. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of classic Lego restrictions throughout these levels. And the combat is still the same too. You just mash buttons and then occasionally do a special move for more studs. Yeah, it's about time we had some combo attacks, or maybe some more special moves. I mean, these are superheroes. Let them be super. LEGO Batman 2 does take one huge step forward. It's set in an open world. This means in between missions, you can roam a LEGO-infused Gotham City at your leisure, saving civilians, unlocking characters along the way, and collecting those precious gold bricks and studs. Yeah, and Gotham is just awesome too, isn't it? The city is dark and gritty, almost always raining, and it's just how I imagine it would look in a LEGO universe. Also, it's in turmoil, so the streets are filled with civilians and gang members for you to take care of. Yes, chilling out in the back cave has certainly fulfilled a dream of mine, and going to Wayne Manor and meeting Alfred, even though you can't actually go inside, and something I've never done in a game before that I've always wanted to do, drive around an open world of Gotham City in the Batmobile, all with that wonderful classic Batman music. And not only the Batmobile, but Robin and Batman's bikes and helicopters and a bunch of others you can unlock along the way. We've played this game for about 15 hours, and there's still lots of mini-games around the place. There's so much to find and collect. Oh, I enjoyed flying about and causing havoc in Brainiac's spaceship. Oh, 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 oh. Watch out, Lagonians. Darren is here to teach you a lesson on laser avoidance. Oh, oh, oh. I did kind of wish we had a bit of a daytime Gotham map to run around in, though, because it is very dark, and it can also be hard to see a little stud bread trail of GPS markings on the road, because they're the same colour as the studs you have to find. Yeah, there's a lot going on screen at once, and it would be nice to have some more camera views for the vehicles as well. Sadly, there's no online co-op, but the trademarked LEGO local split-screen returns. Things struggle to keep smooth in the open world, but it's mostly fine in the missions. And it is a very beautiful and often spectacular looking game. There's none of that foggy background, and you'll notice a nice detail and good use of reflections. The camera is a bit stubborn in the open world, especially when flying in a vehicle or a Superman. I just found it difficult to really navigate precisely. I think what I like most about this game is the story. It's about Batman letting go and accepting help from others, and he doesn't like getting help from others, especially Superman, so it's quite fun watching that play out. I just hope the next game in the series evolves that combat a bit more and irons out all of those niggling control issues, because it has so much potential. Anyway, what are you giving it, Hex? Well, all in all, I wish it had more story and less stud collecting but I think it's a fine Lego game, and I'm giving it 7 out of 10 rubber chickens. I'm giving it 7.5. Barjo, do you wear those tights to strike terror into the hearts of criminals? Uh, yes. They're super effective. <laughs> a busy year for Lego games, hasn't it? We've been building our way through The Hobbit and the Lego movie game, but now the Dark Knight himself is back in Lego Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. Yes, I agree that three Lego games in one year is quite a lot, but if there's one person I can't get enough of, it's Batman, especially when he's in space. Come on! Flash, close the gap after me. Only if I can keep this stuff when we're done. Sure, whatever. The reason this game's set in space is that the dastardly villain Brainiac has hatched a plan to use his high-tech spaceship to miniaturize the Earth! <laughs> Obviously, the Earthlings don't like the sound of this, and even the supervillains are against it. So this means bad guys like the Joker and Lex Luthor team up with Batman and the rest of the heroes to stop Brainiac. Yes, at times this feels more like a Justice League game than a Batman one. 
And this is because you'll be playing as other heroes such as Wonder Woman and Superman. So naturally, I was a bit sad that Batman wasn't the complete 100% focus, but the other heroes had a lot of variety. Yeah, plus the LEGO games have always been pretty amusing, but I think the larger cast really gave them a lot more funny material to work with. Mm -hmm. What happened? I had to save you again. You mean after I saved hmm. the Earth? Whatever. Although the game's cast has grown impressively, I can't say the same about the gameplay. Sadly, it sticks to the old LEGO formula without adding any significant new ingredients. You'll be smashing, building tools with the bricks, smash, build. Smash some more, build something else. Yes, all the building does feel a little bit forced, doesn't it? Like this bit where they need to power up the bat rocket. Instead of something simple like pressing the power button, Batman lasers one of the bat cave walls to pieces and builds a computer with the blocks. They then have to go inside a Tron-style hacking game to activate it. All right, you did it! Now, these are LEGO games, so obviously the building is pretty important. It's just starting to feel a bit forced into the superhero ones. But let's talk about what this game does really well. Oh, affirmative. The different character suits now play a much bigger role. Batman, for example, can go from his regular outfit to a destruction suit that lets him fire off rockets and blow up silver blocks. Oh. Yes, and unlike the last games where you could only change outfits at set points, now you can do so whenever you like with the flick of a button. Plus, they've worked in a lot of suits, like a Sonic one to smash glass... <laughs> ..and an ice suit that can put out fires... ..and even a space suit with a jetpack. Oh, I just love jetpacks! <laughs> Me too, and the costumes add such variety as well. Mm -hmm. I was disappointed when the game broke its own logic, though. They clearly established that Batman's ice suit can put out fires, but then I encountered these magic flames that were immune to the ice gun. It turns out they changed the rules just so the game could force you to use a shield suit to walk over the flames. Illogical! Well, we should also touch on the villains, because we don't often get the chance to play as the baddies, so this felt quite fresh to me. There are the big bruisers like Killer Croc and Grundy. <laughs> Plus, the joke is always good for a laugh. Let's see who's behind door number one. <laughs> nice one, Hex. I thought Plastic Man was pretty cool. He can morph into lots of tools. And I always chuckled whenever he did this. There is also a hefty list of locations, from the Batcave to alien spaceships. And even a miniaturized Paris! Ha ha ha! The game never overstays its welcome in any one location. Plus, wow, you guys, these LEGO games are seriously stepping up the graphics. We played it on PS4 and were constantly impressed with the lighting and the special effects making each set pop. But we should wrap this up. Final thoughts? Well, I think overall, yes, this is the same formula and that is getting a bit stale, but it's also there for a reason. It does work. And I'm glad that the new suits shifted the focus away from the combat a bit this time, because it is still quite simple. I'm giving it 7 out of 10 rubber chickens. Well, while that formula is popular, I just wish they added a little bit more depth to the gameplay to make it more challenging. Still, those cutscenes are utterly charming and I had fun, so I'm giving it 7.5.